Welcome to this course, Introduction to Corda for Distributed Ledger Technology Development. This is a presentation of Coding Boot Camps. My name is Jim Sullivan. I am your instructor. This is our lecture section, and uh, we will go through mostly lecture. We will have intermittent demos, and at the end, we will go over the, uh, the lab assignment. This lecture session is Building Distributed Ledger Applications with Corda. This is our agenda. So we'll discuss what is Corda. We'll discuss getting set up for this course. We'll discuss writing our Cordap or Corda Distributed Application. So Cordap is an abbreviation for Corda Distributed Application. Uh, Cordaps have states, which we will discuss. Cordaps have contracts, which we will discuss. And Cordaps have flows, which we will discuss. And then finally, we will review running our Cordap or our Corda Distributed Application. Some highly recommended uh, prerequisites for this course. If you are unfamiliar with either Java and or Kotlin, please consider taking one of the following self-paced courses. Introduction to Java Programming or Learn Kotlin by uh, Examples, Kotlin Programming by Examples, or both. Uh, both are available uh, through Coding Boot Camps. Also, if you are unfamiliar with blockchain technology or distributed ledger technology. It's recommended that you take the course Introduction to Blockchain Technology or Intro to Blockchain Technology. All three of these courses are available through Coding Boot Camps. Let's discuss what is Corda. So Corda is what we call a permissioned network uh, to communicate on a need to know basis uh, between entities about uh, what we'll call a shared set of facts. So to understand Corda, we need to understand how traditional blockchain networks are structured. So in traditional blockchain networks, like Bitcoin, like Ethereum, all nodes are peers, and they all contain a full copy of the ledger. Each node on the network is solely identified by an anonymous public key rather than having a recognizable identity. Messages between the nodes on the blockchain network are passed unencrypted using a gossip protocol, and that gossip protocol distributes the message to every node on the network. Clearly, this does not meet the needs of real businesses. When real businesses strike legal agreements or transactions, they strike these agreements with legally identifiable counterparties and not just anonymous public keys. Real businesses need to keep the details of the transactions private from unauthorized third parties. So this is obviously highly, highly desirable for business and strategic reasons, but for legal reasons as well. So to meet the needs of businesses, Corda is architected differently. Before joining the network, each node undergoes a KYC, which stands for Know Your Customer. The Know Your Customer process uh, has the, uh, the, the customer go through steps to obtain an identity certificate. Upon joining the Corda network, the customer publishes the certificate, indicating their legal name, IP address, and public key. And this is all published to the Corda uh, network map service. Now, all of the nodes can use the network map service to transact with all of the known counterparties using private point-to-point -point encrypted messaging. So here we have our uh, Corda network, and we can see a notary pool. So by looking at one of these nodes, uh, Titan Technology Partners, we can obviously see the legal name, the address, and the public key. So now uh, this node is now available to conduct transactions, private transactions, with this node base Transcorp and the Colorado River Authority. And the uh, notary pool uh, validates certain parts of the transactions to indicate that they are indeed uh, validated and desired transactions. So let's discuss uh, pluggable consensus using notary pools. So 
The notary pools, like we just saw, use what's called a Byzantine fault tolerant consensus. And uh, so really what the nodes are there to uh, ensure is uh, how does uh, Quarta prevent double spending? So a big uh, problem with uh, blockchain networks was how to prevent double spending. So in Quarta, double spends are prevented using notary pools. And a double spend would mean using the same asset more than once in a transaction. It would be like using the same dollar more than once to, to, buy, different, um, to buy different goods. So a notary pool is a set of nodes, um, mutually distributed, and again, using the Byzantine fault consensus algorithm. Um, the, each transaction uh, is, is signed, and um, it's signed and validated that there is no attempt to double spend in any way. Every transaction requires a signature from a notary to be valid. All nodes in the notary pool do not see the contents of the ledger updates. They see only the hash of each transaction updating the ledger and the index of the fact consumed in the outputs of the transaction. So in other words, the notaries don't see the actual transaction. The transaction is hashed. So we can see here a hash right here. So that way uh, the, the notary uh, is aware of the transaction. And then we can see uh, the, identifiable, the identifiable uh, index of that hash. So let's discuss here Quarta nodes and how, what, how, what they do and what they abstract away from the user. So what are these nodes and what do they do on the network? So we can think of Quarta nodes almost as blockchain black boxes. They provide what are called user-defined flows that allow the node to perform a set of actions, usually to update the Quarta ledger. And then they provide the ability to read back data from the ledger to see the results of the executing flows and transactions. So a flow is really a set of steps that are involved in a transaction. In this way, the, no the node uh, serves to hide all of the uh, complexities of distributed uh, systems and cryptography and data management from the user. So this includes uh, messaging, storage, peer discovery, data distribution, concurrency, transaction recovery, signing, and more. So we can see here, Quarta's abstracting away here a lot of these details. And the idea is to make the transaction as seamless as possible, as seamless as using your credit card on an e-commerce site. And uh, again, all of this complexity is used to abstract away or shield the user from the complexities. Uh, here is the flow. Uh, this is a court of flow, and you can see here it is a set of steps uh, to complete an action or a transaction. So we see here node A, which is a user, a, um, a, an organization on the network, proposes an update. This is an update to the ledger, so this could be an exchanging or of uh, cash or something of value, some other asset. The, uh, a check is made of the update to make sure that the asset is uh, in order and that it is owned by node A. Uh, there is a request for a signature, uh, node B here then, uh, checks and makes its up updates and then uh, signs the update. And then the transaction is sent down here to the notary pool for another signature to again validate there's no double spends and other transaction validations. Uh, then the record is made on node A and the record is made on node B. So this entry here to the ledger is done on both node A and node B. And the, no the notary pool gets the hash. And the three signatures are also sent from the notary pool. That is the signature from node A, node B, and from the notary itself. So again, just to summarize this first section, Quarta is a unique blockchain or distributed ledger technology platform that allows private transactions, uh, private transactions between legally identifiable counterparties, and once it's set up, it's quite easy to use.
while maintaining the benefits of traditional blockchain. And that's done really from uh, behind the scenes.